mostly sunny good morning to you. I hope your day is going well for you, wherever you might be. But as well as that weather out there, it is just gorgeous. 57 degrees with a little bit, a little bit more humidity than we'd like, 83%. But uh, hey, we'll take it. 62 here at Radio Center. Downtown Midland is a little bit cooler at 53. Downtown Bay City is looking at 62 degrees as well. So quite a uh, quite a contrast in temperatures uh, within a very short distance. With MBS at 57, we're at 62. Downtown Midland, 53. Uh, kind of unusual, but we are looking at a north wind right around 9 miles per hour. Very pleasant day, 30.07, and the barometer is rising, rising for a very good reason. We do have a high-pressure system uh, just to the north of us, right around the Straits area. And high is going to be uh, influencing our weather for the next few days. And it does appear as though uh, we're not going to be looking at anything in the way of precipitation, as we told you yesterday, for the next several days. Maybe, maybe, maybe the best chance of any precipitation will be on the weekend. We'll try to pinpoint that as we go through the um, forecast here in the next couple of minutes. As far as the month of September is concerned, obviously it's been wet, but as we've mentioned before, not any record-breaking wet for a lot of folks. Out at the airport, about four and a half inches of rain has fallen in the month of September. What's average for this time of the year uh, in September is right around uh, two and three quarters, two and eight tenths of an inch. So, uh, yeah, we're above average when it comes to precipitation. Uh, last year, we finished the month at just under four inches of rain. So, yeah, we did have a wet month of September. It was toward the beginning of September last year, this year now toward the end of September. As far as uh, temperatures go, well, the first 27 days of the month, we've been looking at uh, nine that were warmer than average. About 13 of those uh, 27 days were average, and about five days were actually below normal. We're going to be looking at uh, pretty close to average, if not spot on, today. And we're going to start to warm up just a little bit more tomorrow. Thursday will be slightly above average. So, the month is uh, going to wind up with about 10, 11, 12, maybe 12 days of above average temperatures and only five below average. But uh, you knew when those below average temperature days were because it was pretty damp and pretty chilly. What's going on across the country? For the most part, we are looking at a very warm central part of the continental United States, which is helping the harvest. It's also creating some issues when it comes to last-minute disease problems, and uh, tar spot continues to be a major issue. We're going to touch base uh, with Jim Zook with the corn growers here as we go through the program today. Uh, the corn growers have come out uh, talking about uh, the corn crop and what uh, they are recommending to uh, corn growers, not only here in Michigan, but all across the country, and we'll play that interview back for you. Uh, that was recorded back a few days ago. Earlier this morning, uh, we were, I want to say, about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than what we were 24 hours ago. We'll continue to be nice with our temperatures. Average is 68 in the afternoon, 46 at night. 68 is our projected high temperature for the day today. We're looking for a low of right around 49 with clear skies. Sun will set this evening at 722, rise tomorrow morning at 732. Tomorrow. Sunshine, 71, 72, right around in there. Again, we're not going to be as warm as what we were yesterday. Yesterday, we made it up to 79 for a high, and 56 was our low. 50 is our projected low temperature for tomorrow night with clear skies. Thursday, more of the same, just a tad cooler, 69 in the afternoon, 48 at night, rolling into Friday. More of the same with sunshine, 72 for a high, 50 for a low. Then on Saturday, we're going to be about 72 degrees uh, for the day. But later on in the afternoon and the evening, we are going to be watching a rather weak disturbance approach. And it's going to try to gather some uh, energy 
as it approaches Michigan. So we're going to have to keep an eye on it because Saturday night there is going to be the threat of some shower activity. And on Sunday, there's also going to be an opportunity for some precipitation too with temperatures close to 70 degrees in the afternoon. And I want to say about 52, 53 for a low on Sunday night. Right now, it appears as though the best chance of coverage of rain on Sunday will be in the southern third of the lower peninsula. But we're just going to have to keep our eye on this system as it approaches. Because when it's all said and done, we do have uh, a major high-pressure system in the northern Atlantic that's really slowing the flow of a lot of these systems. And then on top of that, we've got an upper-level low which is situated over Quebec province in Canada. So the two working together have created this uh, wave effect that is uh, moving ever so slowly to the east. But uh, as uh, the patterns try to approach Michigan, they've been forced up, up over Michigan into uh, the Hudson Bay area and then diving back down into the uh, northeastern 25% of the uh, continental United States. So we'll just have to see how this all shakes out if that uh, wave actually the upside of it, the uh, southwest to northeast side of it begins to get a little bit closer to Michigan. If that's the case, that's where the moisture is going to come into play. And uh, as I said, I think the best chance of any of that occurring is going to be late Saturday night and during the day on Sunday. Record high in this state is 86, set back in 1946. Record low 27, set in 1991. And a year ago today, 64 was our high, 52 was our low, and we picked up about a half inch of rain. So again, for outdoor activity, no sweat for the rest of the work week. Saturday, as we move through the day, the chances of precipitation will increase. But right now, it appears as though, for the most part, Saturday during the day is going to be fairly uneventful. More on the weather as we go through the broadcast. Rick Hollister with the Andersons is standing by. We'll be talking to him in a moment. But before we do all that, we want to remind you, the weather forecast brought to you by the folks at Nutrient Ag Solutions. Nutrient Ag Solutions has the local expertise to recommend the corn, soybean, and other seed products that are the best fit for your field. Plus unparalleled agronomic support with products and services to unlock yield potential and improve crop performance from planting to harvest. Ask about our financing options to help you get more from every acre and lead the field. Visit your local Nutrient Ag Solutions branch or go to NutrientAgSolutions.com. They say there's a secret to growing a great crop. At Nutrient Ag Solutions, they beg to differ. It all starts with a strong foundation, and when it comes to fertilizer, there's no question that Titan XE drives dry fertilizer performance. They've been unlocking the potential in every prill of dry fertilizer with BioCatalyst technology for over a decade. Visit lpi.ag slash Titan or contact your Nutrient Ag Solutions crop consultant to drive your crop's potential today. Farmers, if wheat is a part of your rotation this fall, plan to protect your investment. Multi-peril crop insurance provides coverage for all natural perils and revenue production. Get protection against quality discounts such as sprouts, falling numbers, low test weight, and toxins. Remember, multi-peril crop insurance can be an integral part of your risk management plans. Sales closing date for the wheat policy coming up here in a couple of days September the 30th. So get a hold of Kyle, Kyle Byron at Wiki Crop Insurance in Chessening. His number is 989-284-9975. Along with me, we have Rick Hollister with the Andersons. Rick, good morning. How you doing? Good, Terry. How are you today? Hey, not too bad. Uh, I did see a few more positives yesterday. Uh, Are we uh, continuing that trend? Um, not so much today. <laughs> Corn is, uh, at some I should have known because five. you're doing, you're doing the markets today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, your luck is going to change, Rick. It really is. I know. Yeah. I know. Now, yesterday was more about the energy markets, um, uh, boosting higher crude oil trading at, you know, it's highest levels is traded for, uh, well, some of the crude oil markets as high as it's been in, in several years, um, 
and and getting just above our highs that we traded this summer. So I, I think soybeans and corn were trying to follow uh, yesterday, and it it's been interesting as the energy markets here the last uh, crude oil and gasoline and and uh, and natural gas so they as they have traded higher here the last couple of three weeks. Our feed grains actually have followed along uh, on that higher trend as much as usually soybeans respond, you know, dramatically to to the increases or decreases in the energy markets. You know, is that inflation hedge uh, that we've that, that investors have leaned on? But um, the, the uh, feed grains actually have followed the, the energy markets pretty close. So uh, pretty quiet in the energy markets today. Actually, just a fuzz lower. Corn's down four at the Chicago Board of Trade. Soybeans are down nine. And wheat's backed off about eight cents. So not giving back all of yesterday's gain in corn, but uh, but more more than yesterday's gain in the soybeans, Terry. So we we do have just a reminder for folks we do have our uh, quarterly grain stocks report coming out on Thursday uh, I assume you've mentioned that but just a reminder uh, that we do get our USDA stocks report uh, and, and then we're you know we're trying to evaluate how much uh, good harvest weather we've we've got right in front of us here with uh, it looked like we're pretty wide open through the weekend but uh, like I like you said we're we're putting some rain in the forecast now for the weekend um so at the moment at hemlock oak crop corn is at 489 uh i'm sorry for september or october november uh next new crop at 466 so something else to keep uh keep an eye on for growers as well uh soybeans for this fall at 1228 uh next new crop at 1196 so approaching that 12 dollar mark there on the new crop 22 beans for fall also uh, wheat at 652. Uh, new crop wheat for next summer at 662. Uh, white wheat for old crop at 652 as well, and the new crop white at 667. Right now, it looks like uh, the long range is telling us temperatures are going to hang up there uh, above yeah. average, which uh, you know, 70, 72, 73, very nice. Mm-hmm. But the key is the precipitation. Right now, we're sticking with that below average temperature or precipitation trend to take us all the way through about the 15th of the month yeah the six six to ten but also those uh those uh, uh 15 to 30 day forecasts are are kind of all lined up the same not not that those won't change because they will but uh but it definitely looks like at the moment that we're uh, we're a little warmer than normal and a little drier than normal so and that that gets us kind of past our normal first frost dates here in in Michigan as well. That somewhere in that first half of October is where our normal first frost date. So uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll get on through. It looks to me like this harvest is going to come come uh, surprisingly hard and fast when we when we get to it. Oh, I no doubt about it. I guess the uh, the only thing the weather is not really good for right now is piling sugar beets. But eventually, uh-huh. you know, that's going to that's going to come around. They've got a unbelievable crop. I've been talking to uh, a few of the experts here just over the past couple of days. The soybean crop doesn't look too bad. The corn crop, boy, if we can just hold off on any disease pressure, our corn yep. crop really looks good. And uh, the sugar beet crop, I, I don't know if they'll be able to handle all those beets. Yeah, or or what it means for uh, next year's acreage potentially. Yeah. Oh, you got that right. Rick, you take care. Have a great day, okay? Yeah, you too, Terry. Will do. A little bit more in depth as far as what the markets are doing. Over to uh, Oppenheimer we go with Doug Klein. The market report brought to you by the folks at uh, uh, Hudson, Inc. Hey, formerly Bader & Sons and D&G Equipment. That's who Hudson, Inc. is. Selling and servicing John Deere and steel equipment. It is harvest season in Michigan, and the folks at Hudson want you to respect and look out for farm equipment on the roads as they travel from field to field. And right now, with those fields a little bit on the uh, wet side, please be very, very careful uh, when you're traveling on the roads. The farmers are doing everything they can to scrape the mud or the soil off of those roads, but those roads could be slick. So be very, very careful. Happy harvest from the folks at Hudson. And also by Quality Roasting of Reese, offering competitive, consistent prices for your soybeans. Give them a call for a quote. 
today. Doug Klein, good morning. Good morning. What are we looking at? It's not a bloodbath at all. Okay. But a couple of things. Um, the cost of dry bulk shipping hit a 13-year high recently. So that's something to think about because all grain ship dry bulk. So that makes that makes a big difference. The dollar rising almost 93.68. Well, 93.68 right now. So pushing a lot higher, almost a third of a percent higher. That makes a big difference. The Fed's been talking all day. Uh, talking about increasing or, or eliminating the step up in basis on on death, which is a big thing for farmers, big thing for farmers. You know, and they're, they're of course, uh, painting it as if everybody's a billionaire and those are the guys that are evading taxes. Well, um, it's a big thing for farmers too, and they're not billionaires. Um, and uh, one other thing I was thinking about, oh, the, uh, the one, the 10 year treasury hit 151 yesterday on a on an interest rate and so that's a big thing um cost of money cost of borrowing money that's that's big for some of these corporations that borrow billions and billions and billions of dollars so anyway so those are the things that are in play today and uh we've got a lot of red except for natural gas which is kind of thin and kind of you know kind of up in the ozone layer so they can play with it a little bit to the upside for now the, here's your numbers. The December corn, 534 and a half, down a nickel. The March corn is 542 and three quarters, down four and a quarter. Uh, November soybeans, 1278, down nine and a half. March soybeans, 1293 and a half, down nine and a quarter. December wheat, 713 and three quarters, down eight and a half. And March wheat is 726 and a quarter, down seven and a half. The crude oil, uh, 7431, down 77 cents. And you'd think that um, with there no truckers available to move that gasoline to the service stations, especially in the UK, uh, that the gasoline would be piling up at the terminals and would be causing a lower amount of demand. So maybe you're going to see that in the next couple of days. Uh, heating oil is 227.82. That's down one and a half cents. Gasoline 219 and three quarters, down two and a half cents. Petrol gas 591 and three quarters. That's up 18 and a half cents. Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar gets you a dollar twenty-six ninety-seven, almost at a dollar twenty-seven at the border. That's up seventy ticks. The yen is at one eleven twenty-nine, up twenty-nine ticks. The euro is at one sixteen eighty, down fourteen ticks. The dollar is at ninety-three sixty-nine. That's up thirty and a half ticks. Gold's within forty bucks of a new low, seventeen thirty-eight forty right now, down eleven dollars and sixty cents. Uh, silver is twenty-two fifty. That's down eighteen point nine cents. That Came within 12 cents of a new low for the year. And platinum's at 964.20. That's down 17.40. Right. Doug, you take care. Good, interesting information. Really appreciate go. it. <laughs> Talk to you again. Okay. All right. Doug Klein over at Oppenheimer. Northeastern Paint. Home Decoration Center. We're more than a custom paint store. We have everything you need, from carpet to lighting, it's all here, with quality and satisfaction guaranteed, Northeastern Paint, Home Decoration Center. Since 1959, count them, that's 62 years Northeastern Paint Supply has been serving the Tri-Cities. We have the most knowledgeable staff in the area, offering you the highest quality products in the industry. Benjamin Moore Paints, Hunter Douglas Blinds, Quazel and Kitchler Lighting, Pouring from Pouring America, Fireplace Doors, Gas Logs, and Custom Made Rugs. It's all here under one roof, Northeastern Paint Supply, Saginaw and Bay City. Northeastern Paint, Home Decoration Center. Along with me, Craig Voorhees with the Rummel Agency. Craig, good morning. How you doing? Oh, doing all right, Terry. How about yourself? Hey, not too bad. Not too bad. You got to clear up something for me here. You know, I had this question and uh, got your note just before we went on the air. But we do need to uh, kind of clear up the confusion between the equipment blanket coverage and the umbrella coverage. What, what's, the, uh, what's the difference there? Well, there's a big difference, Terry, and yes, it's an often confused uh, piece of the insurance puzzle. You know, the, the blanket, and of course, insurance uses confusing language, so that doesn't help, but the, the blanket is for your equipment. You know, that's going to repair the equipment if it's damaged or hit, 
by a vehicle or hit on the road, that kind of thing. And the umbrella is purely for liability purposes. So you, and that's basically lawsuit protection. So you hook the two L's together there, the liability and the lawsuit. The umbrella will take care of anything, you know, lawsuit related. Yes, you have liability coverage from your farm and your auto policies, but the umbrella increases that coverage. The blanket has nothing to do with lawsuits. It purely repairs and replaces your equipment. So you really do need a combination. It's a good idea to have both. Yes. I mean, we all, we want our equipment covered, but in today's world, it's a really good idea to talk to your agent about an umbrella. If you don't have one, they're relatively inexpensive. And if you do have one, it doesn't hurt to make sure that you've got the proper amount on it. And if you work with somebody who is involved with farm equipment, knows all about it, like yourself, you do work with companies that uh, can provide that. We do, Terry. We oftentimes, uh, you know, like to see the umbrella policies. You can schedule equipment going back to the, the blanket, but the blanket is a better buy for the, the, the farmer. It's a better bang for their buck, better value. You get more coverage as opposed to just listing out each piece of equipment. So there's lots of different ways to do it, but that's one of how we like to see it done. Very good. Craig, thank you very much. We really appreciate the info. You take care. Have a great day, okay? Will do. You too, Terry. Thank Will you. do. Craig Borges with the Rummel Agency. Hi, I'm Steve Cook from Cook Chevrolet Buick and Bassett. By now, you know that the car and truck market is just as hot as the housing market. Did you know that in much of Michigan and most of the U.S., people are paying sticker price and even thousands more than sticker? Well, thanks to the GM Family Purchase Program, most people in mid-Michigan get to buy low and sell high. That's right. Your trade-in might even be worth more than you paid for. With your GM purchase price at Cook Chevrolet Buick, you'll get crazy money for your trade-in or lease turn-in. But you'll pay thousands less in sticker for your new Chevrolet. Check out just two of our offers. Blazers leasing right now for as low as $275. Silverados from just $321. Will you ever get a chance to buy low and sell high again? Get out right now to the Cook GM Superstore M15 Top of the Hill in Vassar. Payments based on 36-month GM employee and family lease. 10,000 miles per year and includes all rebates. 576 on Blazer, 805 on Silverado. Do it signing. Visit us online at cookchevybuick.com. Chevy, find new roads. Farm Service brought to you today by the folks at Steiner Tractor Parts. New parts for old tractors. That's what it's all about. That's their passion. They understand how your life and job both stop if your tractor stops running. And if you really want to make it look sharp and you need to do a little refabrication, hey, they can help you out. 800-234-3280 or go to their website, steinertractor.com. Steve Anderson joining me right now from Baird & Company. Steve, what's going on in New York right now? Well, we've got a bit of a weakness going on right now. Dow Jones Industrial Average is down by 488 points, putting it at 34,379, volume of 418 million shares. NASDAQ is down by 384, putting it at 14,587, volume there. 466 million shares. Locally, a lot of down here to Caterpillar, 199.59, down 41. Deer, 353.45, up 103. CMS, 58.68, down 78. Dow, 59.54, down 16. DuPont, 69.33, down 78. Corteva, 43.06, down 41. GM, 53.20, down 4. Trinzio, 54.57, down 113. Walmart, 140.80, down 145. Home Depot, 344.41, down $7 even. Huntington Bank, 15.76, down 5 little cents. And AT&T is down by a dime, putting it at 27.30. So quite a bit of red today. I guess. Steve, you take care. Have a good one. I shall. You do the same. Thank I you. will. Steve Anderson over at Baird & Company. The demands and long days of the harvest season are ahead. So now's the time to get the equipment you need to work more productively and harvest more savings, too. Visit Allen's Equipment in McBain, Ithaca, or Beale City during New Holland Harvest Days for more ways to work your best and save. You'll find great deals on select New Holland tractors, hay tools, and harvesting equipment, including 0% financing and cash back. Stop by Allen's Equipment in McBain, Ithaca, or Beale City today for details. But hurry, harvest days in September 30th, 2021. 
Dry edible bean harvest continues here in Michigan. According to the latest uh, information here, about two-thirds of the crop statewide was in the bin. That compares to somewhere in the neighborhood of 32%, which is the five-year average. So obviously we're way ahead there. When it comes to uh, the soybeans harvested, 12% harvested. The five-year average is seven. And as far as corn harvested for silage, 84%. The five-year average is 60%. And maturation on the corn, 57% compared to 43. That's a five-year average there. Back at 1230 with an update. Now we conclude our program with a playing of our national anthem. Stone Specialist Studios. This is WSGW, Saginaw, Bay City, Midland, WSGW FM, Carlton. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. I'm Steve Kathan. The nation's Treasury Secretary is calling on Congress to act with time running out to prevent what she says would be a historic government default. Secretary Yellen testifying at a U.S. Senate Banking Committee hearing says if the debt ceiling isn't raised, it would be catastrophic. America would default for the first time in history. Yellen says seniors would be hurt as well. Nearly 50 million seniors would or could stop receiving Social Security payments. Ranking committee member Pat Toomey says Democrats will have to raise the debt ceiling on their own. Allison Keyes, CBS News, Washington. Also in the nation's capital, CBS's Cami McCormick tells us a Senate committee is pressing Pentagon officials to explain the chaotic U.S. pullout from Afghanistan.